G'day, my name is Brendan. I'm here to talk about MPSTAT, a tool used for CPU analysis on multiprocessor systems. The version I'll be talking about is for Solaris-based operating systems, including Solaris 10, Joints, SmartOS, Illumos, and others. MPSTAT looks like this. It's a command line tool, and it prints out information on each CPU in the system. It's used by system administrators to look at CPU usage and how well that's balanced. And it can also be used by anyone who's interested in uh, the usage profile of CPUs on a system. To run MPSTAT, it takes two optional arguments, an interval and a count. So for example, I could say MPSTAT15. What that will do is it will print out one second summaries and will print output five times. The first output that you see looks different to the others, and that's a summary since boot. And some people skip over it, but I like to look at it to compare, is the performance of the system now different than how it was? Is, are things getting better, or are things getting worse, or are things the same? What I'd like to do is, in this video, I'll go over six key columns of MPSTAT. And then in a second part, I will go through each of the columns in detail, and I'll also go through further analysis. So the first thing I want to talk about is what is a CPU according to this list. Here it's telling me I've got 16 CPUs uh, labeled from 0 to 15. What these are are the smallest identifiable unit on the system that's a CPU. The system I'm on, I can type PSR info minus VP. This is an Intel Xeon system. It has two processors, physical processors, or, or what we call sockets. Uh, on each of the physical processors, it has four cores, and each core has two hardware threads or hyperthreads, so that uh, each physical processor has eight virtual processors. That's how we end up with 16. Uh, I've drawn a, a diagram just to emphasize this point. And it is a little bit tricky in terms of terminology. Um, the term CPU and the term processor does get a little overused. So uh, that's why we can differentiate it. A physical processor is the actual item that you plug into a socket. And this has two of them. On each physical processor, there are four cores. And because of this Intel Xeon physical processor, each core is capable of running two hyperthreads or hardware threads. Since each of these is addressable uh, by the operating system as its own virtual CPU, as far as the operating system is concerned, and, and, and I've explained it out here, two physical processors, eight cores in total, 16 virtual processors in total, which are implemented as hyperthreads, as far as the operating system is concerned, there are 16 CPUs, and it schedules work across those 16 CPUs. It may be an artifact of when MPSTAT was, was originally written, uh, back before multiple cores and before hyperthreading existed, that it doesn't differentiate them in this list. It simply has a, a list of CPU IDs. Maybe if MPSTAT was rewritten today, we would actually see a breakdown of the, the which core it was running on and, and, and which uh, physical processor. You can get that information out of PSR info like I just ran there. So that's what the CPUs are. Um, it's the smallest identifiable logical CPU on the system. And on this system that I'm on, there's 16 of them. The output that I'm seeing here is system-wide. So it includes, I'm actually logged into a joint smart mach machine, but this is the same for Solaris zones. I'm not just looking at activity for my smart machine, but I'm actually looking at activity for the entire system. So that can be a little bit confusing because there might be other smart machines that are doing different work, which I'm not doing, and I need to understand that these convey details for the entire system. So I said I'd go through six columns quickly, and then I'll go through them in more detail. They are, um, and these are the six most useful columns I'd like you to consider. The first is the CPU itself, uh, which is the logical uh, CPU identifier. The second is XCAL. XCAL is for CPU cross-calls. What I'm looking for is a high rate of these is worth investigating because it can be a performance issue. A cross-call is where a CPU 
uh, interrupts or broadcasts to other CPUs on the system, asking them to do work. Cross calls can include things like CPU cache coherency, where a CPU uh, needs to invalidate some items in one of the hardware caches, like the, the say, the, the level one or level two cache or the MMU, and tells other CPUs that that, that that has happened so that they're not accessing stale data. Other reasons why you may have cross calls can include how signals may work or thread uh, priorities where another thread uh, needs to be woken up uh, due to a, a, a high, higher priority event. Also, I think power management will use CPU uh, cross calls to let other CPUs know of different power levels. A high rate of these can be, can, can cost in terms of performance. And so that's why we're uh, looking at these. I'm a little reluctant to put a value on it, how many cross calls are bad. This is something that depends on the speed of the processors. And it's something that will change over time. Certainly, if you're seeing cross calls that are over 10,000 per second, that's a pretty high rate that I would investigate. You can use tools like Dtrace. There's a probe for cross calls so that you can immediately see the kernel stack trace to see why, why that was caused. That's the second column I, I said I'd like you to consider. The third is SMTX. These are spins on mutex locks. So kernel mutex locks are a normal part of a, of a multi-threaded uh, environment which is required for a, a multi-CPU system or multi-processor system. Uh, these are a synchronization pr uh, primitive so that different threads can operate safely on the same area of memory. So uh, the term mutex lock, if you're not familiar with it, is a mutu mutually exclusive lock. And what happens is uh, these operate in an adaptive way where if I am a thread and I would like to grab the lock to do work, and that lock is not available, it's held by another thread that's currently running on a different CPU, I don't context switch off and then context switch back when it's available because the extra context switching uh, is some performance overhead. What I can do instead is if the thread that's holding the lock is running on a different CPU, I can assume that it will be done with it very soon, maybe in the order of microseconds. So what it does is it spins over a tight piece of code waiting for that lock to be released so that it can then grab it immediately. So that's why it's spins for mutex locks. A high rate of these, again, is a performance, can be a performance issue because uh, you have CPUs not actually doing work. They're spinning, waiting, uh, waiting for a lock so that they can do work. Again, I'm reluctant to put a value on it, but anything over 1,000 per CPU sustained, often you'll see it across all CPUs, would be something I'd investigate using tools like Dtrace, uh, and lockstep. The last three columns I'd like you to consider are user sys and idle. I talked about user sys in a VMstat video, and that's uh, user time, which is applications like uh, Apache and MySQL running in user land code. Sys time is kernel time um, for system calls, uh, interrupts, and other kernel threads. And then idle time is time not spent executing either of them. These columns will add to 100% per CPU. This column here, WT, is for percent weight I.O. That's been hardwired to zero on Solaris 10 because as a metric, it was confusing, especially on multiprocessor systems, and it's now been deprecated. That's what the columns mean. The main thing, apart from looking for high rates of cross calls and spins, uh, and also uh, you can see how utilized the CPUs are, the other thing I'm looking for is to see how balanced uh, the CPUs are. So here I've run mpstat1, so I'll print out output every second. And I've just caught something interesting. I'll control C. So for this particular output, you can see CPU 15 was running at 100% system time and 0% idle. So uh, I, I'd refer to that as CPU 15 was hot during that second in system code. And that's definitely worth investigating. What can often happen is an application or the kernel is executing some work, but for whatever reason, it's single threaded. And so it drives one CPU to saturation. Uh, sometimes you can improve performance by tuning it. Uh, 
maybe adjusting a configuration file so that, that can be multi-threaded and it can spread its workload across CPUs. So in summary, what I'm looking for is how balanced the workload is across the CPUs. That's, that's, that's usually why I'm using MPSTAT. And here I've caught something that's not balanced at all. One CPU has gone hot, and that's definitely worth investigating. And you can use tools like Dtrace to investigate that. That's a quick rundown on the fields and why we're using it. In the remaining videos, I'll go through all the fields. And I'll also show you how to identify what's happening in situations like this. Thank you.